Okay, let's look at some of the basic tools and how you use them. First of all, we'll just look at zooming in and zooming out. The zoom tool is at the bottom of the tools uh, panel on the left, click on that. And all you do is click on your image. You can keep your finger on the mouse and drag in and drag out. Um, also, you can hold Alt on your keyboard and that changes the magnifying glass to take it out by clicking it or the plus and minus to zoom in and out with mouse clicks. You can also use the options. You can have 100%, um, you can have fit screen and fill screen. 100% is the best way of assessing your image because that's 100% the actual size of the image. With zoomed in, what you can do is get the hand tool and you can move the image round and pan to a different location. Also, you can go to the window menu, you can go to navigator and that also brings out the navigation panel which again you can zoom in and zoom out by dragging this in and out. Um, and also you can pan around by moving the um, red box around until you get to the location you want. Now underneath the move tool, you have the uh, marquee selection tools. Now the marquee selection tools, you just select the tool and you drag over an object or part of your image, it will select it. Once you've got that, it almost acts as scissors or a knife to cut out that area. Then you can get the move tool and then you can drag that selection around. Now, if you've still got a selection, what you need to do is to deselect that area. You can either go to select and deselect, or you can press Command D on an Apple or Control D on a PC. Now, we're going to look at the histories because if you're doing work and playing around, you might want to take the image back to where it was to begin with. So go to the window menu. Now we're going to bring up the histories so we can um, go back to the start. So we bring up the histories panel, which is opened up here. Now the panel appears here at the side of the flyout and what you can do is you can nest it in with the other panels or have it over the top but you can nest all the panels in together um, if you wish or you can then rip the panels out. So I'll just nest it there so it's a little bit out of the way. Um, basically it records everything you do. So if I wanted to go back to where it was when it was opened, I would click up the top and it will take me back to that stage. Now the uh, lasso tool, you have the freehand lasso tool. And again, you just act as a knife so you can draw around an area. Once you've selected that area and gone all the way around, it's got your ant line. And then what you can do is you can move that selection. While you've got the a selection tool selected, you can move the selection around. When you want to move the object or part of the image that the selection is round, you need to get the move tool and then that will move it. Okay, so I'll go Command D or Control D to deselect and I'll go in my histories panel and take it back to open. Now, next one down is the um, quick selection tool and the magic wand. Now the quick selection tool, um, it works as a brush and you can sort of paint over your image and it will select it. Here there's a good color between the foreground and the background. So it's done a very good job of doing that. If it was on a more complicated background, it wouldn't get it so easy. Now, again, I'll deselect. Now I'll go to the lasso. I'll go to the magic wand tool. Now the magic wand tool selects areas of the same tone, the same color. If I click on the dot duck's body, you'll see it'll select those areas. So not really ideal for selecting an object like this. Now, if I go up and it's got tolerance, it says 10. If I make my tolerance 50, and now I click again, it will select larger areas um, to select. I go back to open in my histories, and now I'll move down to the crop tool. 
Now the crop tool we'll look at separately, but what you would do with the crop tool is you would bring it in and then move the crop area around, ideally you're moving the object around. There are some options up at the top um, where you can change um, how you're making the selections. Um, you show overlays if you wanted to or not, or you can move your object around. And when you're happy with your crop, you can either click at the top in the options or you can just double click. I'll take my image back to where it was. Underneath uh, the crop tool is the eyedropper. Eyedropper selects colors. So if I click, it will sample that color and you'll see that color appear down in the foreground color exactly. So if I wanted to paint with that color or use it somewhere else, I could do. So basically you can select any color and it's pretty good for retouching. Now underneath that is the healing brushes, um, spot healing brush, and that just gets rid of blemishes off your image and red eye, etc. Now underneath there is the actual paint brushes, and again you get a paint brush. A lot of these work in conjunction with um, the brush sizes, which are on the options, which you can increase the size in pixels by taking it up or down. You can select a preset brush. You can have the hardness, ideally um, hard edges or soft edges. So I'll go for a hard edge, which is 100. Get a large brush and you'll see how big it is. And all you would do is you can draw with that. Underneath that is the clone tool and the clone tool, you can select the clone tool. And if I wanted to clone the eye, here you'll see my brush size is only quite small. So if I go back up to the options, I can just make my brush size a bit bigger. Now I press and hold Alt on my keyboard, click the mouse once, move the mouse somewhere else. You'll see a tiny faint glow of what we've captured by holding the Alt. I keep my finger on the mouse and you'll see it will clone the area that I just selected and put a third eye. Mainly it's a retouching tool for getting rid of blemishes from images. Now um, we'll see the history brush. If I get the history brush and I rub over here, it will get rid of what I drew. Now, say for example, I've got, um, I've drawn a moustache on this duck. If I wanted to get rid of that, I would use the history brush. I need to get a bigger brush size. If it's too small, I take my brush size up. And now if I rubbed, it would just rub, rub the moustache I drew over the top or any of the other objects I have recently done and get rid of those. So if you are drawing on something that's on one layer, use the um, history brush and that will get rid of it. The art history brush mainly changes something into like an impressionist painting. So don't get those two mixed up. Take it back to open. Now we look at the eraser. Eraser mainly just rubs objects out and, and parts of your image. There's different types of eraser that uh, you can use the uh, magic eraser tool and that will click on parts of your image and get rid of those. Again, as a, it's hit and miss with those other options. Further down is a gradient tool. Gradient tool is good for making gradients within selections. Once you made a selection or doing it to the whole background. Now you use it in conjunction with the gradients that are up at the top, or you can mix it. Ideally gradients are very good for doing things from transparent backgrounds to a solid color. So if I um, select um, this blue to a transparent color, and I can drag it out, it will put a gradient on it. You can have different types of gradients, um, which are also available up at the top. Take it back to open. Underneath here, we have the blur tool. So I'll just blow up the eye and then go back to the blur tool. Again, it works in conjunction with the brush. So my brush here is quite small. I'll go up to the options and I'll make my brush a little bit larger. Um, and once I've done that, you can also change the strength. The strength is how how much it's doing, how much blurry it's making, or how much it's sharp in the image. So I'll bring it up here. And if I rub this over the eye, you will see it will start to blur the eye. I rub it by holding the mouse and rubbing. So basically it blurs it. I'll take it back to open. 
in the histories. Now we'll go back there and we'll go for the sharpen tool. Now the sharpen tool, again, I need to reset the brush size and make it a little bit larger. I'll leave the strength on 50 and if I rub this over the eye, it will try and sharpen the eye. Now with any digital um, enhancement, you might find it will overdo it. In this case, the more you overdo it, it will break down the image, break down the colors. So um, use it carefully on, on images. And finally, smudge again. I'll get a bigger brush to show you how that works. Smudging will just smudge things. Ideally, this is very good for going round edges. Again, I'm going over the top here with what it does, but you can smudge the edges, take down the strength if you've cut something out and put it on the background. In the history, I'll go back to open and further down is a dodge. Now the dodge tool is using the um, a traditional chemical based darkroom technique. And if I rub over the eye, you will see it will lighten the eye, it'll lighten that area and that's dodging. Now if I wanted to make it darker, I'd go back to where the dodge tool was, hold the mouse down and go for burn. Now I would rub that over the eye and it would darken it. So burn darkens in selective areas. Make sure you've got a brush size appropriate. Make sure it's soft or hard, depending on what you're doing to get the best effect. Underneath that is the pen tools and there for just drawing vector shapes, which we uh, want to demonstrate on here. Then if we move further down, we have the horizontal type tool. Click on the, your type tool. You've got the options up at the top. And all you do is you click on your, your um, document and you type in your word. Once you've done that, you'll see there'll be a tick up the top if you click on the tick and then you can move your word around. You can go from one of the corners by holding the shift key. Make sure you've got the move tool before you do this and you can drag it out and make it a bit bigger or you can make it smaller. Again, once you're happy with it, you can tick or press enter on your keyboard. Now that's using text. Um, now I'll just go back to open to get rid of the text. Um, underneath that is the um, path selection tools and they're for amending paths that you've drawn with the uh, pen tool. Shape tool is very useful if you're doing design work. It does basic shapes such as squares. You would change the color up here before you drew one. Uh, I'll just change the color and make another square. Do a pink one. I'll say change the color here. Um, make as many shapes as you want. Then get the move tool, move them around. You would scale them from the corners. If you held shift, it would constrain the corners, move them around. Whenever you, you transform anything, you click the tick. I'll go back to open and we'll look at some of the custom shapes. So if I go all the way down to custom shapes, up at the top on the options, it has all the shape options. And if I click on here, it has a number of different shapes. Now what you can do is click on here and you can say all shapes and click OK. And that will add all the shapes that are available because sometimes you may not have enough on there. And all you would do is click on a shape and then if I hold the shift key here, I can drag out and it will create a shape. Now shapes are vector shapes, so they're quite useful. So you can drag out shapes and use them in your design work. I'll just click OK to that. I'll go back to open to take my image back to where it started from. Again, we've looked at the hand tool and moving the um, image round. We've looked at the zoom tool. Now down where we have the uh, foreground and background, I'll take it back to the default. If I double click on that, the foreground color, it'll bring up the color picker. Now it's on web colors only, but we can switch that off. Um, you change the uh, colors here, and then you would select a tone here. Now when you're doing colors, always make sure you don't get this warning, which is a triangle up at the top, which means out of gamut, which means it's it's fine on screen, but when you print it out, the color will not be as vivid as you're seeing. You can mix lots of colors and you can use swatches and Pantone colors, but the useful um, box for web designers is down at the bottom where you have the hexadecimal color. You can either input a color on here and it'll select that color from the picker, or you can you know, adjust your color until you pick the 
and write hexadecimal value. Same applies for the background color, we'll also bring up the color picker as well. 